Welcome back. It's 743, our 744. Our next guest is a Queens native who's seen the tri-state from a totally different vantage point most will ever experience. He is a retired NASA astronaut who's been sounding the alarm about safety at the agency. With us this morning is the author of Mission Out of Control, retired astronaut Dr. Charles J. Camardo. So great to have you here, Dr. Camardo. Great to see you and welcome to New York uh, to PIX11. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Let's begin with some of these issues that you're talking about and that we've been reporting on, right? This, this air leak that's at the International Space yeah. Station right now. You say it could be catastrophic. So what do you mean by that? Well, I was a structures person at NASA Langley, a researcher. And so, you know, if it's a crack, for instance, crack, you can have multiple cracks that could grow and merge and rapidly have a rapid decompression, kind of like the Aloha Airlines accident. Okay. Remember that one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, but you, originally it was downplayed upon uh, the discovery of this back, what, 2019? The, uh, which, what was that? This leak. Oh, this leak? Yeah, they you know, I hate to say it, but they tend to downplay some things. But this is pretty critical. I think they're recognizing that it's critical now. The, it's growing. It's not at a critical level, but what they do is they have procedures in place to close hatches. To, it's on a docking port, and so they'll only open that hatch at a certain time. And then everyone is kind of on alert, basically, yeah. if they have to go to their um, mm. Soyuz vehicle or the Dragon capsule to abort the space station, you, leave the space station. You're basically saying they're trying to maintain an image? Uh, you know, I don't think they're trying to maintain an image. Well, they do to some respects, and that's kind of, uh, that's not good, I guess. I wish they were a little more transparent, mm -hmm. kind of like Elon Musk. You know, they have a different um, tolerance for risk. Uh, Elon has a, uh, learns from failure, and so failure is a good thing if you do it in the laboratory, mm -hmm. but not when the astronauts are on the pointy end of the rocket. We'll yeah. talk about Elon in just a second. I got to ask you about these two astronauts. They've been stranded at the space station for months, right? What the heck is happening up there? <laughs> Why is it taking on? them so long to get them home? Well, you know, they had the issue with the star line. Huh? Yeah. And so they didn't come home with the star line. I think that was a good call on Bill Nelson's part. Uh, however, they had to wait for the next rescue ship, the Crew, crew uh, Dragon 8 capsule, came up there, docked to the space station. They were supposed to take four astronauts. They only took two astronauts to the space station that would be there for six months. And so that vehicle is scheduled to come back six months later. And so that's why they had to Can't stay. go sooner? Well, it could, but it cost a hell of a lot more money really? to send the next vehicle up there to get them back. So that's really the best, this is the best uh, way to get them back. A ab absolutely. I mean, the Dragon capsule has been proven, you know, it's did multiple missions, eight or nine to the International Space Station. Mm -hmm. And so as long as there's nothing critical with the astronauts themselves, yeah. then they could stay up there and they're, and they're fine. All right, let's talk about your book, Mission Out of Control. Okay. Tell us a little bit about what we can find inside. Well, I worked for the agency for over four, over 45 years, and I started out as a researcher. I was the oldest first-time flyer in, as an astronaut. I was 53 years old when I flew. Probably worked at NASA. I worked at NASA longer than any other astronaut. And so, uh, and I flew right after the Columbia accident. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I was a researcher, and when I saw what happened to the Columbia accident, I dove into it. And technically, you can understand what happened to the root cause of the problem technically, but the real cause of these tragedies, like Challenger and like Columbia, is the culture. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing the same thing happen with great organizations like Boeing. These are complex systems. They're interdisciplinary, highly coupled, and so we can't really predict ahead of time what is going to fail and what happens. So how do we prevent these failures from happening and recurring? And so I discovered something because of my background that other people really didn't catch, and it was this loss of a research culture. Mm. Mm. Researchers have this intense thirst for knowledge. They're curious. If something doesn't look just right, they basically dive in and it drives them crazy yeah. to understand what's wrong. So you mentioned Elon Musk, right? Yeah. And, and some of his failures <laughs> that have led to success. And he's really, with SpaceX, kind of shaping what it looks like. He wants to colonize Mars. Yeah. So how do you see him working with, at all, NASA in terms of the next space frontier and also his now new role in Washington? Well, in his new role in Washington, that's interesting. He probably will not be able to work with NASA, yeah. right? Oh, because okay. he has these, it would be a conflict of interest. But what I'm hoping is Vivek 
and um, will help transform these bureaucratic uh, agencies so that they become more efficient. I mean, when you look at the SpaceX, do they are they are they further advanced than NASA in your view? Well, what's I, I'm not sure. I don't have the inside, but they're definitely doing things a lot quicker, and it seems more innovatively, right? And so they they do what I call rapid concept development. NASA is using old procedures for product mm -hmm. development, this, and it's very bureaucratic, and they waste a lot of money. Um, how we used to solve these problems as researchers, we would solve these complex problems with small teams rapidly testing in the laboratory, what yeah. I call, I teach students, and what I call is failing smart, fast, small, cheap, early mm -hmm. and often. And that's kind of what Elon's doing. I don't have the insight to understand whether yeah. or not he really has that insight as, as a researcher, and his yeah. teams are building research networks. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for coming in and sharing your insight, <laughs> and thanks for telling us more about your book, Mission yeah. Out of Control. Thank you. And his book? Is, it comes out in paperback starting tomorrow. Good stuff. People are fascinated by space. So, <laughs> good stuff. Good stuff. <laughs>